Hello everyone. I am Neelam, working with Jubilant Biases at the Chemistry Innovation Research Center, which is the hub of innovation within the realms of drug discovery. Jubilant Biases collaborates with the world's leading pharmaceutical companies, biotechs, academic institutions, and research foundations to deliver CRDMO services from drug discovery to manufacturing. Our scientific team is highly experienced and skilled in undertaking challenges in synthesis involving a variety of chemistry. This includes heterocyclic chemistry, carbohydrate chemistry, nucleotides and nucleosides, lipid molecules, asymmetric synthesis, etc. We make use of traditional as well as non-traditional methods like microwave assisted synthesis, enzyme assisted synthesis, photoredox reactions and electrochemical methods, etc., to deliver compounds as per customer requirements. We have six center of excellence or COEs as we call it. They are in the area of carbohydrates, protax, parallel and uh, library synthesis, lipid chemistry, solid state synthesis and photoredox and electrochemistry. Today we have with us Dr. Surya Kant who heads one of these COEs, he'll be presenting before you some of his research findings and latest scientific updates on photoredox reactions, the two upcoming tools for the non-traditional organic synthesis. Dr. Surya is an eminent scientist who obtained his PhD degree at George August University, Göttingen, Germany, and moved to National uh, Taiwan University, Taipei for his postdoctoral research. The focus of his research was on the synthesis of biologically important noble heterocycles and utilization of challenging highly strained cyclopropyl alcohols, amines, and methylene cyclopropanes. Today, Dr. Surya will be presenting a talk on the research findings in photoredox chemistry and the challenges in organic reactions with special emphasis on carbon-carbon sp3-sp3 coupling using photocatalytic techniques. Over to you, Dr. Surya. Thank you, Dr. Neelam, for a brief introduction. And it's been a pleasure to be a panelist in uh, our webinar. Thank you. So my title of uh, webinar is Organic Synthesis Through Light. And if I go into detail, so I would be talking about recent success story on CSP3-SP3 cross-coupling. I would like to uh, inform you that why this CSP3-SP3 cross-coupling has been a hot topic since the last 10 years. Let me take you to the next slide. So the uh, why direct carbon-carbon bond formation is so vital in organic synthesis? Where do I start? How do I bring uh, you the challenges and the success stories so far we have been seeing in different uh, scientific journals and also through our research. If I go through literature, several natural products have been isolated, synthesized. So one natural product is predominantly found in neem tree, which is called azadirectin. It's a very complex molecule and abundantly present in neem tree, neem leaf, fruit, uh, the seed, and also the different uh, leaves and other part of the tree. So if you see this molecule, it doesn't have any aromatic ring. So out of several organ carbon center, only eight sp2 carbon centers are there and rest are all sp3 carbon center. Not a single aromatic ring, either it's heterocyclic or a carbocyclic. So far, the total synthesis of this compound has been successful, but challenging. So the next, another very uh, interesting and uh, potent natural product, which is called mitotoxin. If you see the structure, it's very, very complex. And so far, the total synthesis has not been achieved. There are more than 150 carbon centers having the sp3 sector here, and only eight sp2 carbon centers. And why the total synthesis is not successful so far? To bring the carbon-carbon bond formation in a challenging and chirally selective manner, it has been challenges so far. So these are, this is actually same class of compound where we have the gamberol, brevetoxin, 
and other natural products. So one of the um, research paper by uh, in Nature 2018, Professor Anthony Wood, he has uh, mentioned that a lot of challenges and a lot of uh, uh, so far shortcoming in our organic synthesis that we are not able to get a selective sp3 fluorination on a active drug substance if it is a uh, lead molecule how do we bring a sp3 fluorination at at the selectively or a position which is desired for the biological activity and second hypothetical question was asked if i have a compound lead compound having a piperidine ring then how do i bring a alkyl group or aromatic group at a desired position ortho meta or para to the nitrogen compound or if i have a acyclic precursor how do i also bring in a chiral synthesis of the ring having a proper r or s selectivity into the lead compound third question also several drug molecules are also in the market but the synthesis takes eight steps, sometimes several steps, 10 to 15 steps. And this is one example, peroxetine. It has been synthesized by seven to eight step method. But how can you do it in one step? The bond formation between the piperidine and the aromatic ring has achieved through three different organic transformation. But can we bring it in one step? And that too also retaining the chirality. So we can start from metal precursor of aromatic ring and the halide, can we bring this ring in? Can you connect these two ring in one step? So far the answer was no. Another example also here, they have uh, described in that uh, literature, sp3, sp3 cross coupling. How do I bring two unactivated carbon center connected through a single bond without any complication? Several other questions also were asked. So if I have a lead molecule having a pyrazole and a triazole ring, a unsymmetrical pyrazole, and can I do an alkylation or an aryllation selectively on the pyrazole? Or can I bring the triazole reactivity to alkylate it without touching the pyrazole? So far, we don't have any method. One more hypothetical question was also asked there. If I have a thiophin in the ring, can I make a thiazole or isothiazole? Or can I convert the thiophin to a furan or a pyrol? They coined this uh, methodology as SDM, side directed mutagenesis. So if we can convert this one heterocycle to other heterocycle, that would be really miraculous. Recent examples shows that we can bring a Benzene, we can convert a benzene ring to a pyridine ring. I'm not going to talk about that much, but these are the hypothetical questions asked during 2018 Nature paper. So far, six years have been uh, passed, and I can show you some literature. Yes, the organic uh, synthetic uh, scientists all over the world, different universities, they're able to make this challenging transformation to a reality now. Two examples I have presented here, the recent examples. This bis agitidine has been synthesized by Inamine and published in 2019 in a JOC paper, and they used in seven different steps. We also spent several of our uh, resources to make this compound in 100 gram scale, or more than 100 gram scale. We spent close to three to four months to make this compound. But recent advancement, had has given us in one step by Professor Phil Baran in one step synthesis. One more example by Professor Macmillan and team, in, they published in JAX 2023, similar one agitidine and also tetrahydrofuran ring could be connected in one single step. So my objective of this webinar will be, although there are several methods known to connect SP2, 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 SP3 and SP2, SP bond, but not much literature has been uh, found for sp3, sp3 carbon direct connecting to each other. So I will be showing the recent advancement on photoredux reaction 
as well as also electrochemistry. I will be not talking about electrochemistry today. I'll be mostly emphasizing on photoredox reaction, which is first emerging from sp2 sp2 to sp2 sp3, and finally the ultimate goal of sp3 sp3 coupling. So through this webinar, I'll be mostly taking you through recent advancement of this kind of challenging coupling reaction. Yes, we have some success, and still we have to go far up. So I'll be also showcasing our capability for Jubilant has to successfully deliver different challenging targets to our clients. So if I go to year 2010, it was a celebrated year for our organic synthesis, in particular, palladium catalyzed cross-coupling reaction. So Professor Heck, Negisi, and Suzuki, they were awarded Nobel Prize in 2010. As you everybody knows that Heck, Professor Heck was awarded for coupling between an aromatic ring and a vinyl ring. So it's like SP2, SP2 coupling using a palladium catalysis um, cross coupling. Professor Negisi also. Here also we have to use a SP3. It can be an aromatic ring, heteroaromatic ring, or a vinyl ring, plus connecting with a, another SP3 carbon. So this method was known for making a bond formation between SP2 and SP3 carbon center. Suzuki, we, we have Professor Suzuki has uh, invented this uh, palladium catalyzed aromatic halide with a boronic acid or boronic esters. If you see this chronological order of this uh, invention, so for Heck, from Professor Heck, followed by Sonogasira, Negisi, Stile, Suzuki, Hiyama, and recently Professor Mulander and Professor Balwenga, they have been also using this palladium catalysis reaction to make different kind of bond formation. But none of these methods have been successfully making sp3 and sp3 bond formation. Yeah. So what happened beyond this? So if I go back to again the previous slide, the first report was in 1972. So 50 years have been passed. So what are the organic scientists at different uh, universities or in the pharmaceutical industry have been performing to overcome this kind of challenge of converting a sp3 and sp3 carbon center to make a carbon formation so one example i want to show it this is published in 22nd march 2024 so just within one month so what professor macmillan has and team has described here two alcohols unactivated alcohols, there is no activation center at all. Two alcohols can be combined together to get a sp3, sp3 bond formation and a product in a highly efficient manner. And several examples have been published there. I put four examples here. So what is this technology? They use n heterocyclic carbon, iridium and nickel bimetallic system and oxygen and a light source. So they are calling it as this is possible because of alcohol alcohol cross coupling through photoredox pathway. So, then question comes what is photoredox? What is this technology which has advanced to give us a product, successfully give us the product in sp3, sp3 coupled and single in a single step? So, let's move to that. So, then the question comes what is photoredox chemistry? So, if you see the name itself, it's a photoredox. So we have photo means light. We have to use light source, redox. So it's a reduction and oxidation. So a reaction pathway always go through a reduction and oxidation pathway to give us the product. It's a redox mechanism. So what is photo? How light has been used in organic synthesis? So I can show you one simple example of a photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is nothing but we have the plant uses the carbon dioxide, water in presence of light, and chlorophyll gives sugar or glucose, oxygen, and water. So this has been, I mean, nature is doing this reaction from millions of years with high efficiency, 99.999% efficiency without any fail. So this is the example where the light has been used for a organic synthesis. So after seeing this um, nature, the professors in different universities have tried to use this light 
in an organic synthesis. The first example I found from literature, which was published in uh, science. So professors, what they have done, they have started a reaction or, or multiple reactions in, uh, in vessels. They put starting materials, which can be reacted to give you product and that they keep it at the balcony. And after several weeks, they found the product, successful products, but not so efficiently, not so good yield. So this is the first example which is reported so far using photo reaction or you can say photochemical reaction at a laboratory practice. Several years have passed. So in 1984, so Professor Dorengier, he has published in Working Transaction 1984. What he has published? See this reaction. It is a score reaction without any light. So if you do this direct reaction, it gives us hardly 20% or 10% yield when you have different R group. And also, so the major byproduct was the NH acetamide product. But if I use, or if they use visible light and a catalyst they use, ruthenium bipyridyl catalyst they have used in 5%, 5 mole percent, the product formation was 100%. So this is the example how photolysis or how a light in presence of a catalyst gives a product in very high yield, almost 100% quantity yield. So mechanism what they have proposed here, it goes from a radical mechanism, your diagenium salt, diagenium salt always undergoes in presence of a uh, light and it gives a radical, that radical transfer to other benzene ring and gives a bond formation, compound for intermediate five and another electron transfer gives you the product two. So this visible light accelerates the bipyridyl, ruthenium bipyridyl plus three to plus two catalytic cycle. Through that, the product is forming really efficiently. So from 1984 till 2008, there has not been much development in this catalytic photoredox reaction. The real breakthrough has come in 2000, year 2008 by Professor Nobel laureate uh, David Macmillan and his team in science. So uh, in this period, all the people have used photolysis or uh, light for a reaction organic synthesis, but the real example was published in science where one aldehyde and an alka activated al alkyl bromide in presence of a fluorescent light and organocatalyst six. So they used here a imidazolone uh, chiral catalyst. In again, same catalyst has been used, ruthenium bipyridyl catalyst and 2,6-lutidine DMF at RT, they get enhanced selectively product formation in quite good yield. So this is activated uh, aldehyde, which reacts with again activated bromide. But this was the first example where the light is used for, and in presence of organocatalyst to give us product. Several examples of um, described in the paper, I didn't want to show it. There may be 45 to 60 different uh, product were formed with 70 to 80% yield. The reaction mechanism proposed was the alkyl halide in presence of a uh, radical, it gives us, in presence of this electron, single electron transfer, we get a radical. So the functional group activated radical is uh, generated, which is used in the another uh, catalytic cycle of when you take this aldehyde, react with this uh, chiral amine, it forms a imine and in presence of light or in presence of uh, the radical, the radical reacts in a deep C phase opening and giving you a chirally selective, again, another uh, intermediate nine, which one more radical can takes from a single electron transfer from the ruthenium plus two to plus three magnetic way, and you get the single electron transfer to get the enamine 10, and after hydrolysis, you get the product. These are the examples uh, I want to show. There are many other examples were presented. The yield and the chiral selectivity, you can see 90% uh, and anisomerical excess. In few examples also, it has gone up to 95%. After this uh, publication, during, in fact, uh, within uh, one or two months uh, time, Professor Un uh, 
in he has published in JAX 2008. Similar, so it's like two plus two cycloaddition uh, reaction in presence of visible light. And coincidentally, they also use the same catalyst, ruthenium bipyridyl uh, catalyst, and they get product in 90% yield. Without this catalyst, the reaction goes very slow and it gives us low, low yield. So after these two examples, there are several others, other sp3, sp2, as well as sp2, sp2. So making a single bond, uh, a double bond, that means a reaction between a sp2, sp3 and, uh, and sp2, sp2. Two aromatic rings were coupled or an aromatic ring with a vinyl ring was uh, coupled it to make the bond formation using the same technology. So most of the innovation has been published in different peer reviewed journals and also several reviews have been also published. So due to time constraint, I will not be presenting on this kind of, uh, which was po possible using the palladium catalyst also. So I'm not going to present on that, but mostly I'll focus several examples of few recent advancement or examples in SP3, SP3 cross coupling reaction. So 2022, Again, Professor uh, Macmillan and team, they have published reaction between two carboxylic acid. So if you see it here, you have got a carboxylic acid uh, on a piperidine ring and another uh, alkyl halide or aromatic, uh, aromatic uh, group uh, carboxylic acid also was used in presence of hypervalent iodine, nickel, and photocatalysis and a, a light source, they get this sp3, sp3 product. So it goes through again the same same radical mechanism. So the radical formation was one radical was slower, formation of one radical was slower than the other. But so that this first one radical is formed, followed by it reacts with the another uh, radical giving you a S, uh, SH2 substitution product. So this is the uh, different. Um, substrate scope of this uh, reaction and you can see almost 40 to 50 percent yield and in this case 45 the 70 and the compound over 45 74 percent yield was uh, in just in single step what mechanism they have proposed so one of the carboxylic acid it undergoes in presence of uh, iodine so it is going giving you a hypervalent iodine uh, intermediate and that in uh, it is again going through a transition state and photosensitization with in, in presence of uh, invisible light and UV light, and you are getting a activated product. And the another catalytic cycle also takes the carboxylic acid that is also undergoing a nickel uh, catalytic cycle and the cross coupled product is formed here. The second example, what I, I am presenting here is uh, from JAX 2023. So in this uh, publication, uh, Professor uh, McNair and his team, they have used alkyl halide and also the alcohol. So in, in general, if I take alkyl bromide and alcohol in presence of uh, any suitable base, we get the Williamson ether formation. But in using this technology, photo redox technology and catalyst of uh, ruthenium and uh, iridium, uh, also in presence of light, it gives us a product which is a CC bond formation product. Here also nickel, uh, iridium, and uh, N-heterocyclic carbon has been used. And if you see the product, it's 54 examples have been presented there in the publication with S, all, all of them are sp3, sp3, mostly a secondary carbon center. The catalyst and the, if you see here, the heterocyclic carbon is used here, this carbon, and also the nickel uh, catalyst is nickel bipyridyl complex again. Several ligand is, has been tested here, oxazoline uh, ligands, and almost all of them were uh, successful, and except 22 and uh, 26, where the yields were not so good. So here also, the heterocyclic carbon, uh, oxa, benzoxazoline, uh, cat, and a cationic uh, catalyst is activating the alcohol, giving the activated alcohol here, and that al alcohol undergoes the reaction mechanism, giving the product. And if you see it, uh, the examples, what uh, they have synthesized it, 
So if I go in normal conventional method, SP3, SP2 coupling method, so it is giving the same product, which is a um, accepted drug molecule, and it is in 4% overall yield in seven steps method. But if we use this um, technology for the redox method, so it is giving 46% yield that to in one step for myself. Several examples here also compound number 78 and 79 were synthesized in place of eight step. It is single step product formation. The third example also, it's a four step method with overall yield of only 7%. We're using this for the redox catalyst, catalyst. It is giving 70% yield. Yeah. The last example, what I want to show here is reaction between two unactivated alcohols. Exactly same catalyst has been used in presence of oxygen and a light source and two unactivated alcohols have been coupled together to give you the sp3 sp3 product formation. You can see this methylation also has been done and this carbon carbon formation between agitidine and a CH2 group of a piperidine was, was also successfully completed. So you can see it primary and secondary carbon coupling and a tertiary and uh, primary carbon also could be coupled. This is, um, without this technology, you cannot react this uh, alcohol with alcohol to give a carbon-carbon bond formation. So uh, next, I would like to tell you about our jubilant capabilities in uh, uh, this photoredux uh, technology. So we have uh, in-house pen PSD, Seen LED, and also we have uh, several key cell lamps who takes care of this kind of uh, reaction. And initially, we screen uh, different conditions using this parallel setup of Seen LED in milligram scale using four milliliter uh, vials. And once the reaction is successful, we transfer it to the pen PSD, and we can do it in 100 milligram to one gram scale, and successfully uh, also delivered to our client. And uh, if a reaction is again scaled up to uh, 10, tens to, uh, 10 gram to 25 gram scale. We have also taken it to our uh, batch uh, reactor and uh, using this uh, key cell lamp and uh, deliver to our clients. So these three different uh, uh, reaction setup we have and we have been using successfully. Two examples I want to show it to uh, audience. Uh, I can't show many more because of our IP rights. So this is one example we have done. So it is a uh, reaction between uh, Bromo, pyrazole, and N methyl pyrolidone. So, if you go through conventional method making this intermediate three, so it takes three to four steps to make. So, but using this uh, photoredux reaction, we have successfully delivered this intermediate in uh, multi gram scale, and the, that yield was 45%. That too, after several rounds of purification, as I mentioned. So, the catalytic cycle also goes through the similar ways. We have used bipyridyl system and also the iridium catalyst. One more example is uh, uh, this method is published in uh, literature and using a Nicolas reaction, one can couple this alcohol and the activated center to get this tetrahydrofuran derivative and this uh, tetrahydrofuran derivative is a uh, little volatile and which was reacted using a Sonogasira condition to give us the compound number five. We had different uh, difficulties in isolating intermediate after this Nicolas reaction and also going for the uh, Sonogas reaction. But we use this photoredux technology in one step, we could get this uh, compound number four, which was the desired product um, by one of our client. We could make this compound in just in one step. Although the since the symmetric uh, of tetrahydrofuran was not, to, not so um, selective, selective, we could get the product and the uh, undesired byproduct in three to one ratio. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Surya. Uh, we have a lot of questions from our participants and I'll be taking them in the order. And the first one is, uh, what is the main difference between traditional cross-coupling versus photoredox cross-coupling? Really nice question. Yeah, the main difference, if I say, it's the catalyst because in uh, traditional cross-coupling, we are using palladium and sometimes also nickel catalyst is also is more possible and in uh, photoredox reaction it's a ruthenium or it's a coupling of two two catalytic system of nickel and iridium 
this is one different one different other one is the uh, in traditional cross coupling reaction the reaction pathway goes through oxidative addition then uh, reductive elimination in case of hec reaction and transmetallation but in this uh, photoredox reaction reaction it goes mostly through single electron transfer and radical mechanism okay thank you uh, the next question is uh, what are the different functional groups known so far uh, which undergo the photoredox reactions so far uh, yes uh, as i have presented so the carboxylic acid um, is a very uh, well known substrate this is called actually the decarboxylative coupling reaction so wherever you find a carboxylic acid you can imagine about using that substrate for a photoredox reaction so the reaction goes through a uh, similar mechanism but a decarboxylative coupling so you get the product if you have a uh, acetic acid and using this um, acetic acid in our photoredox um, you know, catalytic uh, mechanism you get the methylation if you take a um, benzoic acid for example you get a phenyl uh, so which is a so in in uh, sub substitution of a phenyl boronic acid so this is one example other one is alkyl halide can be taken alkyl uh, then uh, alcohol also the primary secondary tertiary alcohols uh, can be also taken and sometimes also d aminative coupling also known so wherever you see a amine group that also you can think about to use as a uh, use the substrate in a photoreduct reaction. So this next question is something I also wanted to ask. Uh, why nickel has been uh, used as a preferred catalyst over other noble metals like uh, palladium, platinum, etc. in these reactions? Nickel, uh, the abundance in the nature also. Nickel uh, is much um, better abundant uh, compared to palladium and uh, iridium or uh, other catalyst like platinum or gold also. Gold has been used also in the uh, cross-coupling reaction. One uh, is nickel is uh, quite um, cheap compared to palladium. Other one is the redox potential of nickel, of nickel plus two and nickel plus three. So this is quite low. So it, it will not happen in uh, palladium also. Palladium it's much higher compared to the nickel. So the transition state between the plus two and plus three is very low. So it's very efficient. That answers my question. Uh, our next question is, uh, what are the practical challenges in handling uh, these sp3, sp3 couplings uh, using uh, this technology? Practical challenge uh, before pen PSD and syn LED was uh, invented. So the scientists used to take the LED coils so stripping those coils in uh, around your reaction vessel so that you uh, activate your reaction through LED light or sometimes the CFL light. That was the uh, beginning. It was practical challenge. But once this pen PSD and syn LED has been uh, arrived in different uh, laboratory, this is uh, one of the uh, easiest way of performing. But the practical challenge of doing this reaction uh, through L syn LED or or through uh, when PSD is taking the sequential addition of your uh, reactants. So if you see any example, you have got a uh, catalyst. There are dual catalytic cycle uh, catalyst and also the carbene. There are also bases. So you have and two substrate. So you have to take one substrate, activate it. So the sequential addition is a little bit uh, troublesome and it's an inert atmosphere since it's going through uh, radical, it's a mostly inert atmosphere, although the oxygen also is used in recently, but you have to avoid water and uh, many other things. So it's a little bit challenging so far because of seven to eight different uh, components are reacted uh, uh, together to get the product. And the purification also has been challenging to remove those um, highly molecular weight uh, ligand and catalytic catalyst, and they are UV active. So okay. in SP3, SP3, you get a UV inactive product but your, your catalysts are uh, reactive. So how to remove them? So that is also a little bit challenges, challenging. So one of the related question is, uh, since the reaction mechanism passes through radical mechanism, how is the homocoupled product controlled in these reactions? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, so far, the homocoupled product is also forming. It's not, 
never been stopped uh, through this uh, reaction mechanism, but it is minimized now. How do you minimize it? So you have to activate uh, the sequential addition of your uh, substrate. If you are taking two carboxylic acid, the di decarboxylative coupling. So you have to take one carboxylic acid, so activate it like we do it in acid amine coupling. And you have to activate that and generate the radical slowly, followed by addition of the another uh, acid. Similar way also the di uh, alcohol, di dehydroxy coupling. So you have to take one alcohol and using the inert heterocyclic carbon, so you make one complex, then uh, slowly generate the cat radical, followed by the addition of or, or the other radical is generated in another uh, reaction class, you add it slowly. So that's the that's why you can control it. If you take both the alcohol together, add your catalyst, so then you have like statistical product of homocouple product of both the uh, substrate A or substrate B, so you also get that along with your AB product. Thank you for giving us deep insights into the amazing world of photoredox reactions. Uh, with that uh, question, I think it is over to you if you want to say something to our audience. Thank you, Dr. Neelam. Yes, to audience, uh, I can say hopefully this uh, webinar will make many of you aware about this technology. And you can think now, how do you make um, any kind of molecule faster way instead of going through olefination, hydrogenation, you can think how to make in single bond formation using this technology. So that you can reduce the waste of uh, your, you can uh, increase the speed of delivery and also to reduce the waste we generate in pharmaceutical industry. Thank you, everyone.